Hello and welcome back to UMETSAT and welcome back to the Meet the Satellite series. My name's Mark Higgins and today I'm going to be introducing you to the METOP series of satellites. You'll see behind me a one-to-one -one model of the satellite. This is its actual size. You can see the huge orange platform. It contains 11 instruments. We'll be introducing you to each one of those in a moment. And of course you can see coming off the solar panel which provides all of the electrical energy that the satellite needs as it's traveling around. It takes 90 minutes for this satellite to do one tour of the Earth. It's a polar orbiting satellite, so it's orbiting over the poles 14 times a day and the Earth rotates underneath. There are currently three of these satellites in orbit. There are a number of years between each launch. The primary reason for having the three is to have a continuity of service. That continuity of service is important because these data matter. They come out and go into the computer models that help do the daily weather forecasting, and they're also helping us have a daily understanding of what the Earth's environment and atmosphere is doing. Let's go meet the instruments now. So let's start by looking at three of the non-meteorological sensors on board. Two of them are to do with data collection. We have one that takes information from a network of ocean sensors, takes them up to the satellite and distributes them out to the researchers and the operations people who need them. Another which takes information from the emergency beacons, so personal emergency beacons, when they're activated. Of course, they'll be in remote locations and people will be in danger. Satellites that are going over, which includes the METOP series, will then record when was that activation happened, where was it, and instantly transmit that data back to the operations centers so that some life-saving action can be taken. The other instrument that isn't to do with meteorology but is to do with science is the Space Environment Monitor. So we're also monitoring the electrical and magnetic and charged particle environment around the satellite, and that's used in space weather research and operations. I want to start with the ASCAT instrument. So that's the instrument just here that looks kind of like three propeller blades. What that is, is it's sending out radar energy from the spacecraft to the Earth. On the water surface, where there's ripples, which have about the same wavelength, there's an interaction between the radar energy and those ripples, and where there's strong winds and therefore more ripples, energy is transmitted back towards the satellite. The stronger the wind, the more energy goes back towards the satellite. And this gives us a sense of the wind speed. Because we're measuring in three different directions, we also get a sense of the wind direction. And you can imagine this is really useful for providing warnings to people in ships and people who are having to work out in the marine environment. So let's look at the GRASS instrument. This is a GPS receiver, so it's a black box just here. What that's doing is looking at the various GPS satellites as they effectively rise and set with respect to our satellite. As the GPS satellite rises and sets, or rises or sets, you'll end up with a little profile that passes a little bit through the atmosphere. That little bit through the atmosphere causes a slight change in the GPS signal. And we can use that to work out what the atmosphere must have been doing in order to make that change. So that gives us information about the temperature and humidity. So the GRASS instrument gives us vertical profiles through the atmosphere. Other instruments that do that, so we have the microwave suite of instruments. You can see the two silver boxes just on this side. That is the AMSU instruments and the Microwave Humidity Sounder, MHS. What they're doing is providing us profiles through the atmosphere using microwaves. Advantage of microwaves is they're not so affected by clouds. It gives us quite broad chunks of information, but we get information throughout the entire atmosphere on temperature and humidity. So let's turn now to the infrared instruments. So this is Yazi and HERS. HERS was only available on the first two METOPs. So they're just on this side of the spacecraft just here. And what they're doing is providing sounding information, so that's vertical profile information, using the infrared spectrum. Using infrared, we can use a lot finer channels, and so we get a lot finer vertical information. It's still quite smooth, but much less smooth than the microwave. And we also get a lot of chemical information, so we can work out what's going on with, for example, ozone or carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. So this chemistry information is super essential. The downside of the infrared instruments is they are affected by cloud, unlike the microwave instruments. So as with all of these instruments, you're getting a balance of what you can actually see and determine from the atmosphere based on your instrument's design. 
to another instrument that is also providing sounding information, but in a different part of the uh, spectrum, so this is the ultraviolet part of the spectrum, is the GOM2 instrument just here. And what that's giving us is information about more chemical constituents, for example, ammonia, which is a product of burning, as well as information about aerosols. So this is much more useful information about atmospheric composition and air quality. So the final instrument on board is the AVHRR instrument. So this is a, an imager. It images in six different channels. It's on this side of the satellite as well. And what that's doing is providing images directly beneath the satellite at a one by one kilometer resolution. Each of the instruments I've shown you is essential in its own right. They're all providing really crucial information for our understanding of the atmosphere. But what also matters with this particular set of instruments is they are co-located. They're in the same place. So they're looking at the same place on the Earth at the same time from the same vantage point. And what that means is we can get co-located information about atmospheric phenomena. For example, for a cyclone, a hurricane. A weather forecaster will be able to look at the cloud structure by looking at the AVHRR images. And that'll give them a lot of information about how is the shape of this cyclone. And those kids, that gives a lot of clues as to what the cyclone might do next. But they can also then look at the vertical profile information, look at the microwave data to really increase their understanding of what is this cyclone doing and what's it going to do next. And from the ASCAT instrument, they can also have a look at the surface wind field. This combined perspective that gives us meteorological information, same phenomena, different instruments is really important for gaining a better insight and understanding of some of these dynamic meteorological phenomena. And that makes a real difference in terms of protecting life and property, which is what we're about. These instruments aren't just for science, they're also for producing a public benefit. So those are the instruments on board the MEDOP satellite. We're using those to monitor the land, the marine surface, the atmospheric extent, so temperature and humidity throughout the atmosphere, the composition of the atmosphere, and the clouds. So we'll see you next time.